Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little wedding favor. You could set it at each place setting on your table um, during a wedding, or you could uh, give them out as bridal shower favors. Uh, what we're going to do today is make a candle and then wrap it up in some tulle and also make this lovely hand stamped tag. Today's video is sponsored by Paper Mart. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com or if you're watching this video on YouTube, just look under the video in the video description and you can click on the link and it will take you right there. Easy as can be. So what I have here is some wicking and um, this is by Yaley and I buy it by the spool. But if you're just going to make a couple candles, you may just want to buy a small amount in a package. But if you're doing like a wedding, wedding favors, I recommend getting the spool because it'll be more economical. You want to get wicking that is rated for the size candle you're going to make. This is about two to three inches wide, so I am using wicking that is four candles, two to three inches in diameter. You'll need wire cutters to cut your wicking because there is a little wire inside. I've already cut off this piece that's about three or four inches long and I'm going to wrap it around a popsicle stick. Some people use pencils, but I find the popsicle stick just doesn't uh, roll around on me and it's a lot easier to kind of keep it in its place while I am pouring the wax. All right, now what I'm using for wax is just basic paraffin wax. I usually buy it by the, um, by the case, but this is what you'd see if you went to the um, grocery store or the craft store to buy some paraffin. I'm not using soy-based wax because for soy-based candles, you need to have a vessel. You can't just have them um, in a votive because they're too, it's too soft of a wax. I've melted some paraffin wax in this uh, tin can here. And I can hold the tin can because um, I'm just using a little coffee cup warmer and that's only heating the wax. Up here is nice and cool. If you're going to use a double boiling method, such as having a big pot of water on your stove and then you could put the wax in a can and kind of set it in there to melt it, you could do that, but this is going to be hot all the way around and you'll need a pair of pliers to lift that up or you'll need to wear oven mitts. So just be careful to not burn your hands off when you're doing this project. Also, a wax dedicated crock pot works really well uh, to heat up a lot of wax for a um, project such as this, but it does take quite a while to heat up. Never leave your wax unattended also. All right, so this is pretty easy. If I'm going to do it this way, I could simply pick up my can of wax and pour it in. If I was going to make 50 of these, this would not be the best way to do it because it would take forever to uh, melt that wax. Now, you notice that my wax is colored. What I used to color this was actually just a half of a crayon, nothing fancy. You can buy wax coloring. Um, this was from a long time ago when it was $1.89, but I bet it's probably more like 3 or $4 for a set of colors like this. Um, and it's very concentrated, but if you've got broken crayons around the house, use those. They work just as well. For fragrance, I put in a wax melt from um, AC Moore. They have tons of different fragrances, and they're often on sale for two for a dollar. And that way you don't overdo it with a fragrance, which is really nice. Now I'm carefully going to set that aside and let it cool, which will take about an hour, and bring back this one that I just made a little while ago. So it's actually still warm. I did pour this about an hour and 20 minutes ago or so. And I'm gently going to pull back the uh, silicone muffin cup that I made this in. And these muffin cups are by Anchorware, and I purchased them at Target. And I think it was 10 bucks for 12 of them. And um, they're perfectly safe to use again for cooking after you've done this wax project. There's nothing harmful in there. I mean, you'd use it for canning jams and jellies, so it's certainly not going to hurt you to use this after um, you've made some candles. Now, I'm going to snip this wick, and I actually have so much left over there, I could probably do another candle with it, so I will set that aside. And I'm going to use my little wire cutters here, and what you want is about a quarter to a half of an inch of wick remaining. There, see how easy that cuts? And I'll set that aside because I might be able to use it. Now, you can use this as a votive candle and burn it on a little plate or tile, or you could actually float this in water, which would be another lovely thing that you could use for a centerpiece at a wedding. So two different ideas to use this candle for, which is really fun. All right, so for the tags, we're going to do some tea dyeing. So what I have here is a cup of really strong tea. And what you want to do is just dip the tags in. Now, if I was doing a lot of these, I think I would probably use like a big tray so I could submerge a bunch at once. Now, you can do a couple at a time, but you notice that um, sometimes they float to the surface. And you'll get like this weird, it's called like a, a blossom effect on, on the, uh, one side's glossy, one side is more absorbent. On the more matte side, you could get like this blossom. But it's part of the effect of having the natural tea dye. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. So if you just take it right back out, it's not too dark. But if you longer leave it in, the darker it gets. So I'm just going to set that aside. And here I have a couple that um, 
I left in for probably about 20 minutes, I would say. So I took them out and I blotted them off and then I um, just dried them with a heat tool. So the glossy side is actually darker, which is kind of funny. I thought for sure the light, the uh, matte side would be darker, it would absorb more. But apparently with all the tea sitting at the surface, it made it a little bit darker. So this I stamped on the matte side and this, one is, this I'm going to stamp on the glossy side. So here I've got my ink and I'm using Close to Cocoa from Stampin' Up! because the Close to Cocoa is actually waterproof. So that'll work well with my water base markers. This isn't my typical stamping area, so I'm hoping that it's uh, I get a good impression. And I'm just going to let it go off the edges for a nice random look. Nice natural look. And I'm also going to stamp this little thank you. Both stamps and the ink are by Stampin' Up. They're an uh, older set, so I don't know if they're still available, but I'm sure if you've been stamping or if you go to the craft store, you can find something that is uh, comparable that will work just as well. I am going to heat set this for a second because we're working on glossy cardstock and it does tend to take longer to dry. I can tell it's dry when the shine has gone off the ink and the, the uh, tag is uniformly shiny. Uniformly? I'm not sure if that's a word, but well, we're going to go with it. Alright, so I'm using a couple uh, pastel shades of marker here and I'm just going to color in my tag. Why don't I zoom in a little bit and then you'll be able to see me do that better. All right, that's a little bit better for you. And I'll just go in with the green. And I'm, I wouldn't take too much time with this because you really want it to look uh, natural. That noise there was my uh, daughter knocking over a pile of something as she watches me film this video. It's always an adventure here. <laughs> All right, so I'm just coloring this in. And you don't need to be too fussy. You could use watercolors. That would be pretty too. Whatever, um, whatever is easier for you to do, because this is a bulk type project, so you want to kind of simplify it as much as you can. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of this pink. And the nice thing about the glossy side of this tag is that you can really blend well with water-based markers, which sometimes the water-based markers do not want to blend. But on the glossy side here, it's going to work just fine. All right, now I could probably just set that aside to dry for a second while we prepare the wrapping on our um, on our little votive candle. So what I have is a couple pieces of white tulle, and I'm also going to cut a piece of this um, polka dot tulle here. Each piece is about 12 inches wide. So if you decide that you're doing a ton of these and you wanted to save some time, you may choose to use the tool circles. Paper Mart also has those available. Zoom back out a bit. Um, and they come in multi-pack, so that might be a better, better situation for favors. But I love to have the spools of tool on hand because they're just so handy for wrapping presents or um, any crafts or cards or other things like that you might want to do. So I, oops, I want to put the pink down first. So I like to have the... Um, I like to have the spools on hand. All right, so what I'm going to do is remove this gently from the um, muffin tin, set it right in the middle there, and just gather up my tool. Now I want a little bit more of a natural look for this, so instead of using ribbon, I'm actually going to use jute twine. And Paper Mart carries jute in a variety of colors, and I'm just using the regular natural jute. And I'm just going to tie this around here tightly in a bow. Now I could tie my tag on with this jute if I wanted to, but um, I think I'm actually going to use a baker's twine because I like the little extra detail that, that the baker's twine adds. And I'm using kind of this um, corally pink color. I've cut off probably about a foot. And I think this is dry enough to handle. I'm just going to thread this through. Now, you might want to make like a custom stamp, like um, you'd say like um, Jim and Sarah 2013 or whatever, you know, put details on it like that and stamp it on the back. I would stamp those probably on the matte side and I would do that after you dye it so it doesn't, you don't run the risk of the ink smudging. And I'm just going to wrap this around and feed the tag through the baker's twine. And that's just like you would if you were like putting on a um, tag for a tag sale. If you didn't want to even bother with, um, you could always buy the pre-strung tags, and then when you dyed them, the tags would have a, the ribbon string, that's what I'm trying to say, would also have some dyed brown 
goodness as well. So there you go. And you can see with this pink candle, you can see the uh, the color of it through the tool. This other one was on a white candle, and uh, I think the pink looks really nice. So there you have it. I want to thank Paper Mart for sponsoring our video. You can find all the supplies I use today at Paper Mart at www.papermart.com, where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy grafting.